Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris, and today I want to talk more about debugging. In the past, I've talked about the challenges and differences in debugging embedded solutions, and today I want to give another example of it. Debugging embedded solutions often requires different tools or tools that you might be unfamiliar with. For an example today, let's take a look at a real simple scenario. I have my meadow in this case, but you know, I could be using a Raspberry Pi just as well, uh, a Jetson, anything with IO. And what I want to do is I want to connect a push button to it, right? Just a simple push button. And I want to get events for when I click that. Now let's create an application that has a couple of bugs inherently in it. And then let's chase down how we would find those bugs if we were to run into those. What I'm going to need to do that is obviously I need the board and I need my button, but then I also need a digital uh, volt ohm meter. You don't need anything real fancy, something uh, less expensive like this. And even, you know, just like a $10 analog version with a, a needle sweep would be enough to do this type of debugging. So let's get this hardware set up, build up a circuit. Then we will create some code that should normally get the events that we're after. And then we'll chase down the bugs that uh, we introduce when we do that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect three volts here over to this side rail. So 3.3 volts comes out of the pin here, across this orange wire, and over to this uh, rail on the breadboard. So everything that's col colored in red here is now going to be at 3.3 volts. I want to connect that through this switch to D05. So I'm gonna hook this up to D05. If you don't know, the way these breadboards work is these are connected in these rows. So everything across here connects to D05. Now, normally I would plug this in, just stick it into this positive rail. And then when I push this button, it will connect here to here. But we said we wanted to introduce a bug to make it obvious. So I'm just going to plug it in here. Now, what that's simulating is maybe we have a bad switch. Or, in fact, I've seen where the breadboards themselves are bad and they aren't actually connected here. To fix this bug, or quote unquote fix it, all I would have to do is connect here to here. Or I can just move this over. So when we go uh, to debugging this, we'll probably just move that over. But for now, we'll have it disconnected. And that's simulating a bad switch. So that's bug one that we have. The second bug is going to be a little bit harder to find. Uh, and it takes a little bit more thought process, I guess, to figure out exactly what it's doing. It's To me, it's the more interesting of the two. So let's go create the application that we're going to use for testing this. All right, so I have here a really simple application. We're targeting the F7 Feather V2. Again, this would work the exact same way if we were using a Raspberry Pi or some other device, but this is the F7 Feather V2. And we're just going to use the initialize method. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a button we're going to use the push button from uh, the Meadow Foundation library. And I have connected it here to device pin D05. And then we want to get a click event for it. That's all there is to it to wire up a button on these. And then here, we'll just output to the uh, output display here in the bottom part. So we'll do, there we go. That's our entire application. So when I click the button, I should get some output down here that says that it's clicked. And in fact, just to make sure that we're running, let's try something else here. So what this is going to do is every two seconds, it's just going to output a period to the console so 
that we can see that it's actually doing something so we know that it's running. In fact, that's probably the first thing I would add for the debugging on this to make sure that the device is still alive. So we're just going to take that shortcut right now. So I'm going to deploy this application to my device. Let me get rid of the uh, compiler error. And now let's deploy it to the device. All right, and it fires up. You can see here, it will output. Now we do have initialize, which it did here. And then it should run run and every two seconds we're going to get this period. So we know that it's working. Now, if we press the button, we get no event. Now, if you were doing a desktop or server type development, your immediate reaction would be, there's something wrong with my application. For embedded development, you cannot fall into that trap. There is a point of demarcation of, is it software or is it hardware? that you need to rule out almost always very first, especially on something like this, because the problem could be in your software, but the problem could be external to your software, something that is, uh, I guess, outside the domain of your software. And so let's take a look at how I would go about debugging this first. So the first thing we really wanna do is make sure we understand that when we push this button, what exactly should be happening electronically as well as in our software. So if we think of this as just a voltage over time, so we've got voltage here and time here, right? What's going to happen is theoretically, we're expecting this to be at no voltage. And then when we press it, right? at time t here, so when we press it, what should happen is the voltage we expect to rise to 3.3 .3 volts, because that's what we think we have it connected to. And then when we release it, it should come back down, right? So we should have zero up to 3.3, .3, back to zero when we press and release. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to see if that's actually what's happening. When the software is looking for that button click, what it's actually looking for is it's looking for this edge here, the rising edge for the, you know, press begin. And then this edge here, the falling for the press completed. And then that becomes a click. So the push button has, I think it's called press begin and press and something along those lines but it has a begin and an end, and the pair of them together become a click. So we know that if we're not receiving both of these, a rising edge and a falling edge, then we're not going to get an event. So let's take a look and see if we are getting what we expect here. This is where I bring in a meter, and I'm going to hook it up. Ground, I'm just going to hook to the ground pin on the device there and then go to voltage when i'm measuring voltage i try not to measure on the breadboard itself try to measure on the pins of the device if you measure on the breadboard it does not account for the fact you might have a bad uh, pin or a bad row or a bad breadboard right you want to measure at the pin as close to the CPU or the processor as you can get, or the microcontroller. So in this case, we're working on D05. And again, we are expecting to start low, go high, and then come back low, right? So now if I measure D05, my application is still running. If I measure D05, look at that. It's already at 3.3 .3 volts. So if it's already high, me pulling it to 3.3 .3 volts is not going to do anything, right? So there's the first bug that we've run into is we are not starting 
in a state that we expected it to start in. So the first thing we have to do is understand why on earth would that occur? So let's come back and look at the code. If you look at the push button, it takes a few different things in the constructor. It takes a pin, but you can see right here, this resistor mode defaults to an internal pull-up. So what's happened is internally on this, it has connected that line via a resistor. I think it's a 50K on this processor, but it has connected it to a high voltage. And in that case, which is 3.3. So what we have going on here is we've got this microcontroller and we've got D05 here, and this comes out and theoretically, again, goes through our push button switch. And then this goes up to 3.3 volts, right? This constructor, again, the uh, default has an internal. So really, this is kind of the microcontroller. It does this and pulls it up. And so there's already voltage applied to this input. So when we create the push button, it's already high. So the easiest way to do this is we could then say, all right, let's change it to an internal pull down. That will pull it down to ground instead. And let's deploy this. All right, and now it is initialized and we'll start getting those periods saying that it's running. So let's pull out our meter again and check D05. This time it's at zero volts. So it is at that starting point where we expect. So it is starting low. So our expectation of it starting low is now true. So we've found one bug already. So now we have to test and see if it's going high and then low again. Again, I didn't connect this correctly because I'm trying to simulate a bad switch. So when I push this button, and it might be a little bit challenging to do, but what I would do is I would probe this and then push the button. And I see I'm getting no voltage change. That tells me my bug is still not in my software. It is on hardware. So I have to chase that down. Now what I would do typically is I would look at the wires here. And if this was connected to positive here and this is connected and when I click it, I don't see voltage, that would be really, really suspicious that the switch itself is bad. You could use your meter and use the ohm setting and ohm the uh, switch out just to see if when you connect it, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So now let's assume that we figure out that it's a bad switch. We replace the switch with one that's good. So now it will connect from voltage to that input. And then I can, again, probe this pin. And when I press the button, it goes up to 3.3 volts and I release the button, it goes back to zero. So now the behavior electrically is doing exactly what I wanted. So let's switch back to the software. And if I press the button and release it, we're getting a button clicked event. So there we go. We know we've fixed the problem and it's important to understand that the problem is not necessarily in your software when you're doing embedded development. Oftentimes it will be in hardware, especially when you're prototyping, when you've got things like breadboards that have loose wires and especially if it gets complex, it's real common to see that. So you need to get familiar with using tools like a meter or an oscilloscope or a logic analyzer, things like that in order to find these types of bugs. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching and get out there and build something.